Hi, welcome to Woodworking with Wes today. We have had many requests on our ceruzing to show us some new colors. Well, I just happen to have a job that I'm working on right now that has a navy blue island. So we're going to use the blue paint that I'm using for the island and make a ceruse color with black glaze and white glaze on these drawer faces that I had left over. But we're going to do something a little different at the end. We're going to try something I've never tried before. I've often said on my videos to try a test sample of your own. Use colors that you would like because color choice is yours. So if you decide to use a color and you try it on a sample piece and you don't like it, what do you do? Well, we're going to try something. We're going to ceruse over ceruse. I'm going to wire brush this drawer face that we've already ceruzed and see if we can do a new color sample on top of the old color sample. I don't know if it'll work. We're going to give it a try. First thing we need to do, wire brush, and then off to the paint shop. For any of you who have not seen any of our videos on ceruzing, the first step, you don't have to strip or sand or anything, the first step is to take a wire brush and wire brush the old finish. The reason you wire brush the old finish is it enhances the grain so that the glaze will highlight the grain as we do our ceruse. The process of ceruzing is wire brush, paint, do a little sand on your paint so that it smooths it up, put your glaze on, and then do a top coat. You'll watch this as we go through. But I just wanted those who have not seen this process before, who might be joining us new, and if you have, welcome. But we're going to go ahead and ceruse. We always ceruse the ends. I guess we shouldn't say ceruse. Ceruse is the paint process. Wire brush. Texture. We'll go through and do that on the ends first, and then with the grain the rest of the way through the door. Watch as we go ahead and do this, and like I say, we're going to be doing our painted door also. The first step that we did was wire brush. The wire brushing that we're doing creates a texture in the wood. Oak, and this is red oak by the way, the oak has a soft and hard grain uh, as part of the wood and when you wire brush you hollow out some of that softer grain and it creates a texture in the wood and the lower parts of the texture capture the glaze in the ceruzing process which really highlights the grain as you change the color. You don't need to sand or strip or anything. The grain, I mean the wire brush takes off enough of the old finish that the new finish will stick. You can see that it doesn't take very long but you just get on there and wire brush. We're going to go ahead and finish up the other two and head to the paint shop. On our way to the paint shop I thought we would just talk a little bit about what we'll be using for paint. For our color coat, we are going to be using just a pigmented pre-cat lacquer that we had mixed up to a Sherwin-Williams color. Blue chip is a Sherwin-Williams color. We picked it out at our Sherwin-Williams store, had our pre-cat lacquer mixed to that color. We'll spray that on, on as our color coat. The glaze that we're going to be using is glaze that I have used in other videos, and it's just M.L. Campbell Furniture Glaze. I did the same thing when I had M.L. Campbell mix my glaze for me. I just went to Sherwin-Williams, picked out the white that I wanted, picked out the black that I wanted, and they mixed me white glaze and black glaze according to the color chip that I gave to them. So that's the way to pick your colors when you go to have any of your glazes and, and lacquers or, or, pre, or uh, primers mixed. Just pick a color from your paint store and then take it to your paint provider and have them mix to match your paint chip. Off to the paint shop. Mm -hmm. 
we're back from the paint shop now with our blue uh, paint all sprayed. Again, this was a pigmented colored lacquer that we're using, a pre-cat lacquer. Blue is a very trendy color right now. Um, so we just used a color that we're actually using on a job for an eyelid as an accent piece. We're going to glaze one of these uh, drawer faces white and we're going to glaze the other two black and uh, we're just going to go through glaze them see what happens. First thing we're going to do though is take our sanding sponge and give our color coat just a light sand to knock off any of the little bumps and to prepare it for the glaze. And that's all we're going to do. Just a real light sand like that. That'll smooth it up real good. Get it ready for our glaze. Go around the edges. You can see by the back side. We didn't do the back side because this is just a color sample. But you can see the black back side. There's that old golden oak. And there's the new color. Let's get ready to glaze. The sanding sponge that we used is just a fine grit sanding sponge that we purchased from our retail paint supplier. Like I say, the first one we're going to do is white. So let's open up our white glaze. Always mix your paints and your glazes. Get your stuff at the bottom of the can mixed up so your color is a true color. I'll be applying this glaze with a brush, just a small brush, and I always like, I, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I like to put lots of glaze on so that it gets into the grain of the wood. Oh, there we've got glasses so we can see what we're doing. How about that? Okay. Put it on with a brush and wipe it off with a paper towel. Our glaze is taking off some of our paint. That's unusual. This is a lacquer, a pigmented lacquer. It should have sealed so that we didn't have that problem. I don't know if that's going to give us what we want. We're learning here. Maybe we're learning that we needed to put a sealer, a clear sealer coat on there. I don't know. We're going to see. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now that grain is coming up. Now we're not going to, in, in some of our videos, we have sanded our finish after we put the glaze on there to highlight our color even more we're not going to do that with this. We're going to let our white glaze not only show the grain, but be part of our color. See, that gives it a little softer blue color right there, but oh, look at that. I like that. That's kind of unique. But that sure highlights that grain. Look at that grain of that oak and how much different that is 
from our original golden oak. Isn't that beautiful? Let's do the black glaze now. Let's put that out there let that dry. Switch from white to black. Black is a little heavier sediment at the bottom than the white, and so maybe that'll hold into the grain of the oak a little better. We'll see in just a moment. I think this blue will look great with a black glaze, but let's see what happens here. Yeah, it makes a difference. Okay. Putting our black glaze on our edges. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like with the glaze on the face of this drawer face. Okay, there that grain pops again. Again, we are not going to sand the glaze off of the blue color. We're going to let the black glaze be part of the color. We're just going to wipe it good and then Finish cleaning it up. Let's put it next to the white one and see what happens. Oh yeah, that doesn't look too bad either. Okay, now, this one is the one that was green. I put an X on the back of it. We wire brushed it, sprayed it blue. Let's see if we can ceruse over ceruse. See what happens. I've never done this before so we may be in for a sad ending or a happy ending depending on what happens. But we're gonna find out together. The one thing about having a lot of paint on a, on a, a wire brushed surface is the paint does have a tendency to fill the grain that you spent all that time wire brushing out. And that's kind of what I'm wondering is if I have so much paint in there from 
first and second coats and the original golden oak color on there to begin with maybe I have too much material finish to really make the Saru's do what it's supposed to and that's what I wanted to see this is just something I wanted to try as an experiment to see what happened and I thought you'd like to see what happens right along with me sometimes that's how you learn is you do something you didn't plan on doing and get results you didn't expect to get that's kind of the fun part about it. It's always fun to see what happens. Okay. Here's that. Okay, we got it nice evened out. Well, I think it's going to work. Of course, I could have wire brushed a little harder, spent a little more time, maybe enhanced the grain a little more. But you know, It does work. Now let's put the two blues together. Put them up here together. You can see the difference. Our, our glaze held better in the original without the two coats. You can see how the two coats kind of fills it. I think I could have wire brushed a little harder and gotten back to this extra glaze. I don't know. We'll see. But you know what I think? Just as a personal choice, let's just go this way. I like the white one better. That's just my personal choice. But I really like that white color on there. It looks pretty cool. Now we would take these back over to the paint shop, give it a coat of clear top coat on it to protect our, our uh, glaze and paint finish. Well, we're all done. We'll be taking these over to the paint shop and giving them a clear coat, top coat, to protect our finish, like we said. But you can see what a difference it makes from an original golden oak color to a new Ceruse finish. Remember, color choice is yours. But we just thought we'd give you one more chance to see this process and a different option from one that we've used in the past. Way cool. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Woodworking with Wes.